Have you ever been on location taking a photograph and this light just hits and it looks gorgeous and then you get home and it's just, it's not there. You haven't captured it or you can't bring it out in your photograph. What I'm going to do in this tutorial is I'm going to show you exactly how to bring that magic back into your photograph inside of Photoshop. So you're going to learn some new techniques here and uh, one of the ones I'm going to show you is something called exposure blending and this is going to change the way that you edit photos and now that sparkle and that magic is going to be back in your photos. <laughs> Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com, the very best place to learn Photoshop and Lightroom. So I've got a very exciting tutorial for you today on exposure blending. Now this is an alternative to HDR. HDR is great and I've got tutorials that I'll link underneath on HDR and it's something you might want to use a lot. But in certain circumstances, this exposure blending gives you a little bit more realism in your photos and it gives you a little bit more freedom of expression as an artist. This technique, we can paint those shadows and those techniques, uh, those shadows and those highlights in exactly where we want them. So it's kind of like dodging and burning with dynamic range. Maybe that's another thing it could be called. Um, in fact, just the term exposure blending is a term that I made up, but this is a technique that you guys are gonna love. So if we look here, we can see this panorama that I shot with my drone. This was with the DJI Phantom 4 Pro. And you can see that this panorama has a lot of dynamic range in it. We can see a lot of detail there in the land and in the sky. Now, when you're at this time of the day, sunset, here's what really happens. When you're up flying or shooting with your regular camera, you're gonna see the sun is gonna be very, very bright and then the ground is gonna be very dark. So the way to get around this is to take more than one photograph. And so we're gonna use just a section of this panorama as an example. And by the way, if you wanna see more of my photographs like this, my aerial stuff, check out my Instagram at Photoshop Cafe and I I post a ton of photos there. All right, so we've got two raw files here that were shot in DNG and I'm just going to open these. I'm just going to double click and we're going to see them here inside of camera raw. So if we look at the first one here, we can see that this was quite bright. And what we're doing is we're picking up all the details here in our foreground, in our rocks, and uh, you know even some of this green and those different things is showing. And then we take a second shot here. So the second one here, I've shot with a faster shutter speed and what it's doing is it's bringing out the detail and the color in the clouds here and in the sky, but of course it's very, very dark here. So rather than doing HDR, I'm going to blend these two together. So at this point, if you wanted, you can do some preliminary adjustments here to just kind of make these areas look nicer, but I'm just going to take it straight out of camera for now. So I'm just going to select both of these and then what I want to do is just choose open images. Now what I want to do is I want to combine them both into one document. So I'm going to take the darker one and I think I'm going to drop that one on top. So I'm just going to click and drag with the move tool. Notice we're inside the tab of the second one. I'm moving, I'm not releasing yet and I'm going to hold down the shift key and now I'm going to release and it's going to drop them on top of each other. In fact, let's check the layer of visibility to see if there's any movement which is not really a lot of movement, but here's one of the things I like to do is select both layers. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna have Photoshop right now automatically align these and make sure that they are pixel perfect aligned. So if we go up here and we choose to go under edit, we're gonna choose auto align layers. I'm just gonna do reposition here and click okay. And then what it's going to do is it just moves these and makes sure that they are exact. Now at this point, we're going to start blending them and we're going to use layer masks to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a hidden layer right now with a mask. So we're going to select our top layer and we're going to go down to the layer mask. But before I click it, hold down the Alt, that would be Option on Mac. And then what it's going to do is it's going to create a black mask, which means it's going to hide the contents of that layer. Now what we're going to do now is we're going to selectively paint in those darker areas with our brush. So I'm using a Wacom Intuos Pro Medium tablet 
and uh, and I've got a review on that I'll link to that as well um, but the reason I'm using this is because the pen gives me pressure sensitivity which means rather than working like a marker it works like a pencil where I can shade in the areas so instead of just applying everything hard I can gently blend in the two layers and this is the beauty of using this technique with the exposure blending versus HDR because it gives us control exactly where we want to add that dynamic range and we can decide how much we want to do by how hard we push with our pen. Now for those who are not using a pen and you're using a mouse, it's okay, I'll show you how to do that too. Hit the B for the brush tool. Now the way a layer mask works, if it's black, it hides everything. If it's white, it shows everything. So we want to make sure we're painting with white. Choose white as the foreground color. I have a great tutorial, by the way, that goes in depth in using uh, these layer masks and I will also link to that in the show notes in the descriptions underneath. All right, so we're getting ready to paint now with this white. Now, I just want to go up to the brush settings here, and I just want to use a soft round brush. Don't worry about the size. We'll just set it about there for now. Make sure the softness is all the way up, which means hardness is set to zero. Now, I've got the brush opacity there. I'm going to set it to about 30. With the brush selected, just tap the 3 key, and that'll set it to 30%. There we go. Let's look at the brush settings. So right next to the brush, we've got this little settings dialog box. We're going to click on that. And what we want to do with the brush settings, if you're using a pressure sensitive tablet, that would be a Wacom or, a, a, you know, one of those uh, Microsoft surfaces, make sure we choose transfer and in opacity, make sure it says pen pressure. Right now, there's this little thing because it doesn't see a pen. If I move my pen close to the tablet, notice that that little warning goes away. Okay, so now I've set my opacity to pen. Now, I don't want the size on there that would be shape. Just make sure transfer it only. And that's great. So I'm just going to move the brush settings out of the way. And I'm going to make my brush bigger. Now, there's so many ways to do it, but I like to just sometimes use the right bracket key to make it bigger, left bracket key to make it smaller. Of course, with the tablet, I can also uh, go here and I can use the touch ring to change the size of the brush. But if you don't have the tablet, use those bracket keys. Now, one of the things you may want to do, I'm actually going to knock this up a little higher to 50% to get started with the big stuff. Now, if you're using a mouse, I do recommend that maybe you lower this because I'm set to 50%. But if I push as hard as I can, that's going to give me 50%. But if I paint gently, I can be painting, you know, anywhere below there. If you're using a mouse, you're going to be set. So I would set it to maybe 20 or even, no, maybe for the big stuff, 20 to 30. All right, so let's get started now, and I'm going to paint in the sky. So now I can just start to do that. See, see, we're bringing back all that nice detail in the sky from the other photograph. And I just prefer to do this so much sometimes for these types of photos. I like this better than HDR just because it's a very realistic looking result. Now, if you wanted, you could mask around those mountains and just use a layer mask to kind of add that in. That's one way of doing it. And notice that as I'm painting, it's adding more because I'm just doing it with a low opacity. And, you know, if some of these areas feel bright, you know, like maybe down here, I'm going to go quite big and I'm just going to gently paint over here and create a natural vignette. I say a natural vignette because I'm not darkening. I'm just adding from the other photograph or from the other layer. Okay, so if we look at this now, there's before and after. You can see we've made a huge difference already. Now, one of the things I do like to do is to go in here, drop this down, and I know the sun's coming from this direction. And notice we've got all this beautiful highlight area here. And what we've got down there is a lot of shadow. Now, here's a little trick. What I could do is actually take the mask density. You know, if we turn the density down, then it hides that mask. So I'm just going to kind of blend that in a little bit. See, so it's bright, but I'm adding a little bit of that top layer now. So if we look at this, see how it's giving us a little bit more depth in there. Now, if we want to add these areas in, we've got our brush. We've got it set to 50%. And I might drop it down to about a 30% right now. And I could start to paint in some of these areas where I want a little bit more shadow. See that? 
and manually just start to paint this in. And as I do this, I'm just going to start to get a lot more depth to my photograph. Let me just speed it up so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so if you look at what we've done now, we've started to add a lot of depth to this. And if we look at it before and after, you can see what we were doing. It's starting to give it a little bit of a painterly look, but it's also bringing out a lot of depth in a photograph. And this is one of the reasons I really love this. And also it's a true art form because you can change how it works by the way you paint. You can paint with very, very fine detail and it can look very three dimensional or you can use a larger, softer brush and then it gives it a beautiful painterly look. There's one thing I want to do though to just kind of put the icing on the cake and that's to do a little dodging and burning with the highlights. And to do that, I'm going to hold down the Alt or the Option key and create a new layer. And the reason I do that is because now I get this dialog box and I'm going to change the blending mode here to overlay and then just click OK. Now I'm going to hit the X key and now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be painting with a white brush and then that's going to give me my highlights. Let me make it a little bit bigger and my opacity is still about 30 which is pretty aggressive. A lot of the time I might do 10 but for the sake of this illustration I want this to kind of so you can learn quickly. All right, so let's go. And I love to just pick up the green here. Uh, remember the lights coming from this side. So yeah, I'm kind of breaking the rule a little bit going there, but it just looks so nice. All right, so that's just kind of a sample of what I'm doing there. And what this does is it makes it look like the sun is just a little bit more intense. Now, I got a little carried away with this on purpose, and I realized I was just going to wind it back. So let me just going to take the opacity and drop this down about 40%. So if we look at the original photograph, then with the layer on top, and then finally a little bit of dodging and burning to bring out the details right there. So if you like to uh, you know, work on your photographs and create beautiful photos, uh, one of the things you could do is you can sell those photos on Adobe Stock. So I'm going to give you a link underneath where you can sign up as a contributor, where you're able to take your photographs and submit them. You can earn some extra revenue and get them in front of millions of people. And also, if you want to try out Adobe Stock, I'm also going to give you a link underneath for 10 free images that you can download and you can use in your work. And so if you like these kind of tutorials, hit the subscribe button right now and also that notification bell and then you'll be alerted whenever I upload a new tutorial, which is at least once a week, every Tuesday and sometimes on Saturdays. If you like this tutorial, smash that like button into dust. And by the way, I got a question for you. What is your favorite place to photograph? Or even if you don't photograph, what's your favorite place to be? Is it the ocean, mountains, desert? Uh, let me know in the comments underneath. I'm really curious where you like to hang out. All right, guys. So thanks for watching. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.